this is Dr. Abdul Rahman Hakim. I'm a consultant uh, transplant surgeon at Dr. Rela Institute and Medical Center. Diabetes mellitus uh, is a chronic uh, progressive disease. I think over a period of time, uh, uncontrolled, poorly managed diabetes can lead to uh, lots of organ damage. Some of the common ones that we, uh, that we always hear about is damage to the kidneys, what we call as nephropathy, damage to the, to the nerves and uh, in the feet, uh, which we call as neuropathy, damage to the eyes, which we call as retinopathy, and also damage to uh, heart and brain, which can manifest either as heart attack or as a stroke. I mean, this usually happens uh, over a period of progressively uh, poorly managed uh, diabetes. Um, one of the reasons why this happens is because of uh, damage to the microvascular system which are the small blood vessels in the body and also macrovascular system which is the larger blood vessels in the body. Uh, so it's very important to manage uh, your diabetes once it is diagnosed very efficiently. Uh, this involves both the nutritional aspect, keeping yourself healthy and also the exercise aspect and also keeping the blood sugars under uh, control. So pancreas transplant is uh, a surgical procedure where we uh, transplant a healthy pancreas from uh, a deceased donor, a cadaveric donor uh, into, a, into a patient with diabetes so as to completely uh, cure uh, diabetes. See the common uh, indications for pancreas transplant uh, are two actually. There are, these are people who have had, who've got type 1 or type 2 diabetes with uh, kidney failure. Uh, this could be somebody who has already started on dialysis or are nearing uh, dialysis. The other common uh, indication is to uh, transplant for those who get uh, what we call as hypoglycemic unawareness where they are completely unaware of their uh, low uh, blood sugar and can end up with uh, problems because of it which could either be uh, uh, like a fit like episode or they can have an accidental uh, fall. So we transplant uh, pancreas alone uh, for them. There are three common ways of pancreas transplant. One is uh, implanting a pancreas along with the kidney transplant, which is called as a simultaneous pancreas and kidney transplant. Uh, the second thing is basically somebody who's already had a kidney transplant and we uh, implant pancreas in them. And the third one is where uh, we transplant pancreas alone. Let me just give you a sort of understanding of uh, these three uh, types of pancreas uh, transplant. Um, now, I think, I mean, for the, for the simultaneous pancreas and kidney transplant, which is where we uh, transplant both the pancreas and the kidney, um, this happens in about uh, two thirds of the patients, we do both the transplants. So one of the main indications for pancreas and kidney transplant is patients uh, who have got diabetes and uh, have had progressive damage to their kidneys and either have already started on dialysis or, or uh, nearing dialysis. Um, so for these patients what we do is that we, uh, we make a cut in the center of the tummy um, and, and we implant the pancreas first uh, which is uh, behind the right bowel and then the kidney uh, gets transplanted through the same incision into the left side of the tummy. So this basically gives them relief both from the diabetes and also from the kidney failure. And this is basically the commonest uh, reason for a pancreas transplant. The second thing is uh, where we do a pancreas after a kidney transplant. Um, this is for those, for example, somebody has already had a kidney transplant um, because of the kidney failure and they're diabetic and they want uh, an utmost sort of full control of their blood sugar so that their new kidney does not get damaged with, with the diabetes then we do a pancreas transplant after them. So it's basically pancreas after a kidney transplant. Third one and the most uncommon one is where uh, somebody gets a pancreas transplant alone. For example, somebody has got very erratic uh, blood sugar control um, and, and, and get problems because of uh, either hypoglycemia where the, the blood sugar is very low and, and they are not aware of it and these people can either get a fit or they can get a very sort of uh, accidental injury because of sudden fall from low blood, blood sugar or they get very high blood sugar. For these patients, we can do a pancreas transplant alone. But however, this is not a very common uh, reason for uh, a pancreas transplant. So before uh, you have a, a pancreas transplant, patient have to go through a rigorous uh, assessment. What we have to make sure is that there's not already a uh, big damage to their heart or to their lung. So they go through a, what we call as a cardiovascular uh, system assessment. Um, so they will, they will have multiple investigations. So basically, I mean, those who uh, get a pancreas or a kidney transplant or those who are, who are extremely fit um, and have not already had a significant uh, damage or if they've already had a damage to the heart, for example, they've had a heart attack, if it's already been corrected and they're fit following that, then they can, they can have a pancreas and a kidney transplant. 
Usually patients stay about 10 days to 14 days uh, following the pancreas transplant in the hospital. The pancreas in fact uh, starts working instantly uh, as soon as uh, it is transplanted within the operating theater and you have to constantly monitor them make sure that there is uh, no damage to the pancreatic uh, graft that we implant by, by checking their blood sugar regularly in the first few days following the transplant but once it all settles down then the patient won't need a regular uh, check of their blood sugar. And in terms of their kidney transplant as well, we make sure that their creatinine, the kidney function uh, drops up sequently and, and it becomes normal. Um, so, so the overall patient stay to an all, on an average about 10 to 14 days following the transplant. Um, complications wise, they can get things like bleeding after a pancreas transplant procedure or, or an infection of the pancreas that we transplant. Any of these can be managed either with, uh, with another operation or, or it could be uh, treated with uh, things like antibiotics. So the other complications that can happen uh, with pancreas transplant are things like uh, uh, what we call as inflammation of the pancreas that we uh, transplant, what we call as pancreatitis. If that happens, uh, you might either develop some collections around the pancreas or uh, it can lead to sort of high blood sugar uh, for, a, for a short period of time. If that is, if that is there, then we can just uh, treat it by giving some rest to the pancreas or by draining uh, the fluid collections that can form around. Um, the other sort of uh, complications that can happen are things like uh, leakage from the small amount of bowel that we transplant along with pancreas. If that happens, uh, then obviously I think this can again be treated with a drainage or uh, might need another uh, operation. So following a pancreas uh, and a kidney transplant, patient would need to uh, be on immunosuppression medication which actually reduces the immunity in the body. So these medications uh, prevent uh, the risk of rejection of the foreign uh, organs that you've, that you've been transplanted with. So what we do is that, I mean, start them on these medications initially at a higher dose in the first three months after the transplant and subsequently the, the doses are reduced over a period of time. Because these medications reduces your immunity, there's also risk of uh, that you might get either an infection or, or over a period of time, there are risk of uh, developing small cancers like uh, skin cancers for which we monitor uh, the patients over a prolonged period of time. In terms of follow-up, uh, subsequent to their discharge, they will be seen in uh, clinics twice every week initially and then uh, after a month they will be seen once once every week and then following sort of three months time they can be seen a monthly after that. So I think the most important benefit uh, the patients get after pancreas transplant is that they would be able to eat whatever they want. They don't need to have a strict diabetic uh, diet which, which they used to do. They would not need insulin uh, shots anymore, so they don't need to inject themselves, so there's no more needle pricks, uh, that are, which is fantastic. I think our patients sort of extremely like uh, when we say that they're not going to have uh, injections anymore. And, and I think the fact that they are uh, off dialysis with the functioning kidney transplant, it also means that uh, they have an independent life, an active life, they don't need to go for dialysis sessions. So there is double double benefit where they get completely free of from uh, sugar control and also they're off from uh, the kidney issues that they've had. Ask me what, are, what why why do we really need a pancreas transplant when you can continue on insulin? I think the most important thing that I feel is that uh, a pancreas and a kidney transplant gives them uh, not only the quality of life which I said before, but also increases the quantity of life. Um, if on an average, if somebody continues on uh, a diabetic patient continues on dialysis then then their uh, risk of uh, dying um, is at least three times higher than if they get transplanted in the first year and after the first year it's at least six times higher than those who get transplanted on an average studies have shown that uh, those who get transplanted just with a kidney transplant with a diabetes and a kidney failure can stay up to about 15 years uh, longer than those who are, are diabetic with uh, kidney failure and those who get uh, both kidney and pancreas transplant live on an average at least about 22 years longer. So there's an extreme benefit with the pancreas and kidney transplant. On an average, uh, how long does uh, these uh, organs last? I think we say, I mean, it can last anywhere up to about 14 years on an average. So some patients can last even up to 30 years and in some it might not la last last longer. From what uh, data we've got in the West, we say that uh, the pancreas transplant, um, a first year survival following a pancreas transplant is anywhere around 97 to 98 percentage. So if 100 people are transplanted with pancreas, 98 of them will be alive after one year.
And after five years, about uh, 90 of them will be uh, alive. Uh, in terms of uh, the graft functioning very well, I think uh, first year after the transplant, there's a risk that five of them might lose the graft. And five years after the transplant, there's a risk about 15 of them might lose the graft. So it's about 95 and 85 percentage. So I think the outcomes from the pancreas transplant have actually become much better than what it was in 1960s when it was first transplanted. Um, although it is much more popular in the West, it's not taken much precedence in uh, in India, and still there are only a very few centers which do pancreas transplant uh, in India.